Welcome back to the Parenting and Pregnancy Podcast, where I sit down with parents, experts, and other relevant people and discuss all the topics relevant to you through pregnancy and parenthood. If that sounds like something you're interested in, subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes. For those of you who listened to last week's episode, you know that I had a conversation with Crystal Paulus, a certified baby wearing educator through the Center of Baby Wearing Education. We had a great conversation all about the different types of carriers, how to use them, what to look for in a carrier, and how to pick a carrier that's going to work for you. So if that sounds like something that you wanna hear after you listen to this episode, go check out that uh, last week's episode. That was a really good one. But today we have part two of that conversation and we are breaking down all of the myths of baby wearing and we're really getting into the nitty gritty of benefits of baby wearing for both mom and baby. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we've kind of covered a lot so far. We've we've talked about different types and some of the benefits and safety, um, but I really want to go into the benefits for mom and baby. Um, yeah. Beyond just um, keeping baby close, but maybe kind of go a little more in depth, maybe some, some of the science behind it. Um, you know, we know it's been done for, for centuries, mm-hmm. um, but but why do you um, advocate for it beyond just just loving to have baby close? Yeah, so um, I think one of the things is um, having baby close, um, you can easily do skin to skin, um, which is great for not only, like babies are meant to uh, be around you to be supported. It helps all those neural pathways to um, happen as they are adjusted and growing. Um, but also it, for a mom to uh, baby wear, helps her milk to come in, having that close um, contact. So if you're on your breastfeeding journey, uh, excuse me, um, having them close that, um, and then also you're able to respond to them quicker. Uh, so uh, babies aren't crying as much so that it can reduce um, crying up to, I think 30%. I, I'm blanking on that number right now, but there is some research out there about that. Um, And for moms, it can also really help. You can take care of yourself, especially in this day and age when we don't really have a village of support where we have extended family, like living, you know, in the same house or even down the street. Um, Many times families are separated. You can take care of yourself. Um, It can reduce the risk of um, postpartum depression and anxiety, having baby nice and close to you. Um, A postpartum depression anxiety can also help it happen in men. So um, this can also help, you know, you know that baby is good. They're right here close to you. Um, Yeah, and then I think the biggest thing is when you are able to, if you have baby on you, you can take care of yourself. So you can, if you're hungry, you can go and get that that nutritious meal to help you feed yourself so you can heal, you know, if you're a mom um, <laughs> who's healing from birth, because let's face it, we all have to heal from birth afterwards. Um, that's a big thing that your body has gone through. And Yeah, one um, thing that can really be eye-opening is when you point out the size of a placenta, which is about the size of a plate, uh, and, and, and you have a wound that size that needs to heal among all the other areas of your body that needs to heal. When you think about that, imagine if someone had a wound that size on the outside of their body and how we'd treat them and, 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 um, want to help them with things so that they can rest and heal. Um, and I Mm -hmm. think sometimes because that wound is on the inside of our body, um, and, and some of the effects of it are less visible, um, we forget how much healing really has to take place. Yeah, and then also making sure that you go to the bathroom um, because that can also uh, displace the uterus, which, um, so it's not able to clamp down as much um, afterwards, like if this is especially directly postpartum. Um, So yeah, so those are some great things for the wearer and then just some some great bonding. Um, I know, partners who are not their birth partner um 
it's a great way to like, you know, finally connect with their baby. Cause you know, there was, you know, nine months of them watching, um, baby grow in their partner's, you know, belly, but, um, they get to have that close contact. Um, baby gets to smell them, get to know them really well. Um, and uh, the research has only been in dads, but I think it's true for any caregiver, any, um, parent of any sex, but, um, it's like, it changes that rewires your brain. You have chemical reactions in your brain when you are have baby close to you. So this is a great way to help you bond with your baby. Um, and yeah, so those are a couple of the things. <laughs> yeah, and and I think it's so cool. Like you said, it, it really changes your your brain chemistry, but it changes the babies too. I mean, they've, mm-hmm. the uh, there's been studies that have been conducted that that show that in cultures where baby wearing is kind of the norm so there's a lot of baby wearing happening babies spend like i think it's 60 percent more time in a quiet alert state and so when they're in that quiet alert state they're more uh easily calmed uh when they do get upset they're less likely to get upset breastfeeding uh, initiation so starting a breastfeeding session is is more successful in the quiet alert mm-hmm. state um uh, and so that's really awesome. And then you were talking about using it so that you can take care of yourself, but I think it really allows you to take care of the whole family. So I've yeah, seen with my true. clients that I think it's more popular among second, third, fourth time parents, uh, as opposed to first time parents, because it can be really nerve wracking when you have a toddler maybe who's really needing some attention and support, but so is your baby. And so now who's going to, who, who are we going to leave to cry? Whose needs are we going to meet first? Um, Mm -hmm. and, and when you're able to wear that baby, you can meet that baby's needs. You know, the baby's safe. You're not worried about what's happening in the other room with baby. You know what's going on with baby, but you can meet the toddler's needs or or the older sibling's needs or your own needs or your partner's needs. Um, rather than kind of having to pick, uh, who, whose needs you're going to meet first. So that's something that I love. Yeah. Yeah. As a mom of three, I can't imagine life without baby wearing I mean like I said I use it pretty much daily um and we are out of like um that um my youngest is 18 months now so you know we've kind of in are in a new stage so it's more like there are definitely times where we do the cuddles and um in the carrier for long periods of time but it'll a lot of times right now it's like that up and down like she wants to be held um but I'm I also am a homeschool mom so but I need to take care of like this or that with the older ones we need to do some schoolwork, and I can easily take care of it all like and still have my hands free (laughs) yeah um yeah and sometimes it's like multiple kids sometimes without having baby wearing on your side yeah and sometimes it's just like, I need to contain her. <laughs> and, you know, if she's into it, like right now we're into pulling hair and um, my three-year-old's um, hair is nice and long and good. So it's just like, okay, I got to contain you so you're not hurting the other one, but I need to work on dinner or something like that. So, yeah. yeah that's that's great. Okay, <laughs> so we've, we've covered a lot. Um, kind of the last thing I want to go over uh, is is some of the myths of baby wearing because I think there's a lot of myths out there um, and you kind of touched on one in the beginning um, and that's kind of about when babies moving or wiggling around that means that they they don't like to be uh, worn or you shouldn't be wearing them but I, I I think there's quite a few myths that can turn people away from baby wearing before they've even tried so can you share with, with us some of those myths, maybe? Yeah, um, I think, like, we'll, um, talking about how when babies try, like, if they're pushing away or trying to turn around and, like, to see, um, people will say, oh, my baby doesn't like it, um, and, uh, 
that a lot of times it's like babies just learning to roll over. They're learning to push up and stuff like that. And what they're doing on the floor, they're going to be doing on you. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're ready to turn around and be forward facing. Um, so I think just like if you are going to baby wear, just know that what baby's doing on the floor, they're going to do on you too. And that doesn't mean that they dislike it. A lot of times um, people will put baby up and they'll um, baby will be crying uh, especially if it's something new and different it, if you hadn't worn um, like at newborn phase and now you're like oh baby's a little more mobile but I need more <laughs> I need to be able to do a little bit more um, a lot of times people think oh baby doesn't like it they're uncomfortable but um, for one, if you are nervous and unsure, babies are very intuitive and they can pick that up. Um, so that's one reason also why I think um, prenatally we should be practicing um, baby wearing. And then um, two, a lot of times you like people give about like five seconds, five to 10 seconds. And then they're like, baby doesn't like it, which I get. A baby crying for five to 10 seconds can feel like a couple minutes sometimes, you know? Yeah. So, so I think the best way is putting baby up in the carrier and walking with purpose. So a lot of times people will be like, oh, I want to put baby up and I'm going to do like, I'm going to like chop these vegetables or whatever, but it's like, okay, nope, your baby is crying. So walk with purpose. So, um, that can be in the house, better yet, get outside, you know, like walk with purpose, like quick, you know, like um, not just like that leisurely little thing, but like walk with purpose. Um, if you, if for whatever reason you can't get outside because of weather or something like that. Another um, thing that I like is an exercise ball or a birthing ball and like bouncing on that, that can be another way to help soothe um, baby. It's kind of like gives them that rocking, um, you know, like purposeful movement that helps kind of lulls them to sleep or, um, or to calm. You know, yeah. To calm. Yeah. And I think, um, sorry to interject, but yeah. one thing um, that part of the reason I think babies love baby wearing, especially in that new word stage, but even beyond that is because think about it, in your womb, that's what they're feeling. They're, they're, they're nice and tight uh, with you and you're walking around and they're moving. So that's kind of why a lot of babies think in the womb, it's party all night, sleep all day, because they're getting yeah. that nice, gentle rock all day long, nice and close. And then you lay down and they're like, oh, time to get up and play. So I think yeah. that you can replicate that with a carrier um, by getting them nice and close and doing that purposeful wa walking or bouncing to replicate yep. and then they that hear, familiar environment. And then they hear your heartbeat and stuff. And that's also another, you know, when you're outside of the womb, I mean, all of a sudden there's bright lights, there's cold, all of a sudden they're hungry for the first time in their lives. Cause they had like, you know, the placenta that was continually nourishing them. Um, so yeah, so it is a, it's a big transition. It's a hard thing to be a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so the more we can replicate those familiar feelings and sensations, I think it can really make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are, is there any other myths that you can think of? I I'm sure there's more. I just am not. Oh, there was one I had, um, that I wanted to bring up if you didn't, and now it's slipping my mind. Um, Oh, uh, two. So one myth that I've heard is that um, the baby wearing is only for one body type. So mm. thinking maybe you're too slender or um, uh, you weigh too much or you're, you know, whatever, you're too small, whatever the case may be, um, that, that baby wearing doesn't work for them. Oh, yeah. And I'll also put in um, if you have a disability or a limit or um, or have limited mobility that baby wearing isn't for you. Like say like one arm isn't able to move as much or you're an amputee or something like that. Um, yeah, I, that's one of the reasons why I think a baby wearing educator is fantastic. Um, I know I personally have a lot of experience. I have a lot of, 
um, uh, connections with other baby wearing consultants. So if I get, don't have the answer, I can ask them, I can refer people, you out to different people. And then also I have connections with the uh, manufacturers and stuff because uh, they manufacturers do reach out to us and they want to hear what we are seeing, what um, uh, the general public is dealing with so that they can meet needs to, you know, to make their, their products to work for other people. So I think that's the biggest thing. Um, I know that uh, there is a lot of carriers that are um, going more inclusive, which is really fantastic to meet all body types. Because I know um, uh, quite a few years ago, like probably about a decade ago, it was like there wasn't um, like buckle carriers that had extensions or really long webbing to meet around for um, uh, waist and arms, you know, that so now there are a lot more carriers out there, which I think are great. Um, and then I, people are just, there's a lot of like mom and pop type of um, shops that are popping up where they're not the big, you know, like brands, like I'm thinking like Ergo, Tula and stuff like that, but they have a lot more inclusivity. Um, and personally, I don't know about you, but I love helping, you know, like the small shops, um, and a lot of times they are making it themselves. If we need, you know, like a, even more of extension from their normal, like we can easily connect with them, have them make it to um, to the specifications for each um, cube. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's, and it's great to have those kinds of resources because you can only get so far trying to look those things up yourself. But I, and I, I love that you pointed out Kind of some of those physical limitations you know um and that we can still get past those with baby wearing it doesn't exclude us from that opportunity um and then yeah. the last myth that i've heard is that you can only baby wear one kid at a time so yeah no yeah so um there are some different carriers um like uh like if you have twins, a great option is like Rinslings or a wrap. Um, there are different ways that you can wrap where you can um, have both um, babies on front. Um, you can, uh, I'm re forgetting, it's not the twin go. I'm thinking of, I'm blanking on the name of it, but oh. there is one where it's kind of like two, it's like a buckle carrier where both babies are on the front. I'm going to have to look that one up. I can't, I can see it, but I can't think of the name. Well, I'll link to all of the different carriers we've talked about in the show notes. Okay. So you can look, yeah. go down there if you're wondering what we're talking about. You can find, <laughs> find it because it's slipping both of our minds right now. Um, and then what um, about siblings? So maybe they're not twins, not the same yeah, age, but um, maybe we have a toddler can... and a baby. Yeah, so I that's something that I do quite frequently. You can have um, one on the front and one on the back, and the, there's lots of different ways that you can mix that up. Um, like I've done woven wraps and um, soft structure carriers or those buckle carriers um, or made eyes. Like you can really um, play around with it, and it's a fantastic way um, to take care of both um both kids um there has been a time when we I was hiking and my son hurt himself and nobody else wanted to walk so I had um baby on front um baby in the back and carrying him in like on my hip do not recommend it but it like but I was thinking I was but like, I'm doable. so glad I have this yeah <laughs> good because... and you kind of feel like superwoman while you're doing it totally I if because how else can you carry three to... kids <laughs> exactly I wish I had somebody to take a picture because I really I did I felt like superwoman at the moment and yeah. we all made it to the car and then we decompressed <laughs> I've I've been there nannying um I did a nanny share so it was three toddlers and I've been in that exact situation and as exhausting <laughs> as it can be to to do a long walk um I was also grateful to have the carriers and and felt like superwoman carrying three three toddlers at once. So um Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for taking the time, Crystal. Um, oh, where yeah, can course. people find out more about your services, um, connect with you on social media, share all that information with us? Yeah, so um, I'm with Beyond the Bump. Um, so you can find me at Beyond the Bump, B H for Black Hills dot com. Um, and that's the same uh, for my uh, Instagram and Facebook. Um, um, Beyond the Bump BH. Um, I offer consultations where I do in person. Right now, I'm doing in person at the Apple Tree Midwifery and Birth Center. And then I also do in home consultations for those who are in the Black Hills area. Um, and I also do virtual um, things too. So I can connect with people. Like I recently moved from Alaska and I have done quite a few consultations with my friends up in Alaska or like all over. So um, there's definitely, I prefer in person, um, but there kind of is no limit to that. Um, I also provide, I do a prenatal uh, baby wearing class. Um, it's a prenatal baby wearing 101. It talks about uh, all the different kinds of carriers. We go through each of them really um, in depth to help you and your partner choose which carrier would work best. We talk about all the um, the milestones that a child goes through in the first year, and so which is great on its own. But then we also tie into baby wearing because you're like I said um, previously, your baby wearing journey, it changes as your baby changes. Um, it's not always going to be like cute and snuggly, like all up in here is like, you know, it's going to be like on your back so they can see um, and or on your hip and stuff like that. Uh, and then I also offer some free classes. Um, and let me just interject there really quick. You are offering yeah. that Baby Wearing 101 class uh, on Zoom as well as in person, yes. right? So that um, is something that anywhere yeah. around the world you could um, attend, right? Yep. So right now um, I'm just doing that virtually at the moment. I find that okay. it is, um, it's helpful just like families can be at home. They can be, like be in their own element. They can take um, notes and stuff like that at the same time and so right now i'm just doing that virtually um okay. i do also uh offer an extended package of that where it's um teaching newborn care postpartum care um how to uh, mother's care and how to prepare for um the postpartum so that and the baby wearing so that's a three-week uh course that's also virtual and then i also do um free uh classes it, down at um apple tree midwifery and birth center where the, um i'll have the carriers you can bring your own we um look at carriers um i can do a quick fit check um as time allows like it kind of depends on how many people show up and stuff like that too but that's a great way and then um for those who are in person i do offer um I loan out carriers too. And so if somebody so kind of like a trial period. Yeah. So they can, um, like with the first consultation that's included with it, um, they get to try on a carrier for two weeks and then, um, it, and then if they want to do additional time or additional carriers, um, that's just an additional short little fee, but yeah, so that's a great way to try things on. Um, oh, and one thing I should also say, like, so if you are prenatal and you're like, well, how am I supposed to practice with my baby bee carrier? Um, I would say like a bag of rice. Actually, I have one right here. So it's like this, like five pound bag of rice is a great way to, um, obviously there's not legs and anything like that, but it's more about getting that muscle memory of like putting baby up, like how to tighten, how to like get it spread across your back, like keeping baby where you could easily kiss them, you know, so tight, um, inside. And doing that with the weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just a with regular just a baby doll that's not weighted. You can't really get that same feeling. So I love that idea of the bag of rice. You don't have to buy an expensive doll or anything like that. Just, just something that's 
around five, eight pounds, something like that. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you can make um, a nutritious meal for it after, <laughs> after your yeah. baby is born. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm so happy I got to have you on the podcast today. Um, and then all of those um, contact information that Crystal was talking about, her website, her Instagram, Facebook, all of that, I'll link that in the show notes as well. So if you're wanting to connect with her, go ahead, go down there, check her out. Um, she's a great person to connect with. Um, and at, even as a postpartum doula, if you really, I, I'd refer someone to her if they're really curious about baby wearing, because as much as I have some familiarity, she knows so much more about all the different types and then having those those carriers to try so um thank you guys for listening and we will catch you in the next one all right guys i hope you enjoyed that part two of my conversation with crystal paulus if you are interested in any of her services go ahead and go down to the description and you can find links to her services and her social media platforms and I'm also going to be linking all of the carriers discussed in this conversation down in the show notes so go check those out. If you liked this episode and think you might be interested in more content consider giving this a thumbs up and subscribing in whatever platform that you listen to so that you don't miss any new episodes. Thank you guys for listening. I'll see you in the next one.